Welcome to Take Time. I'm your host, Patrick Marlette, and let's talk about the Carpenter M14 Brooklyn Field Watch. This is part two, our in-depth review of the Brooklyn Field Watch. I'm very excited to share all of my findings with you. Now, to offer you just a little background on the group, Carpenter Watches has been around for a while, and it's headed by Neil Carpenter. If you've ever wanted to check out their watches and you live in the New York City area, there is a brick and mortar store called the Brooklyn Watch Shop. Um, I'll send you a link, obviously, in the description to Carpenter Watches, but on there in their contact section, you can see where their store is. So if you've ever wanted to check out a Brooklyn Field Watch in person, you could do so there. Now, some of you may recall that I did an interview with Neil on a previous channel. Um, Neil and I have been in touch ever since. Uh, he's a really great guy who makes a really great product. And I'm shocked it's taken me this long to get one of his watches in. I don't know why we never thought to do this, but this is some of the first hands-on experience I've ever had with any of his field watches, let alone the M14. And I'm happy to say I'm really happy with most of my findings. But as you guys know, with all of my reviews here on the channel, I like to start with the bad and then move on to the good before giving you my final opinions of the piece. Now, the first thing I want to mention is actually one of the measurements. Now, I did all the measurements myself for this watch, the ones you saw featured at the beginning of this video, and the watch is listed as a 40 millimeter watch. However, I measured the entire circumference of the watch. It's completely cylindrical, and I found that it measures out to be 41 millimeters, and I'll show you that now. So if we're looking at the M14 on its profile, you'll notice that when I put my, these are brass uh, calipers. They've been taped over, so don't worry, guys. The watch should be fine. But you'll notice that when I measure this out, let me get it exactly lined up here. When I measure it out, it measures to right about 41 millimeters. And I, you know, I've taken this measurement again all the way around this cylindrical case, and it every single time measures out to 41 millimeters. Um, so, you know, not quite 40, it still wears like a 40, but not quite 40 millimeters. Now, does that change my overall opinion of the watch? No, not exactly. Uh, one of my first bad notes I want to mention is the misconception that this is a dress watch. I think it's very pretty and very elegant, and I think that's why folks come at the M14 Brooklyn Field thinking that it is a dress piece. So the scale seems a little disproportional, but uh, you are mistaken in thinking that it is a dress watch. It is very much a field watch. I um, don't find the overall scale of this watch a problem. As a matter of fact, I actually quite like it. But if you know, you're not interested in a thicker watch, again, this is darn near 15 millimeters thick. Also, you know, if you're not interested in a watch that is larger in width, 41 uh, seems to be good to me. I think it's right on the cusp of pushing your typical boundary for a common wrist size. A seven and a quarter inch wrist like mine, I find anything up to 42 millimeters great um, in width. Uh, but I'll talk about these dimensions a little bit more on our B cam. So bearing in mind that this is a field watch, I don't find any issues with it measuring out to be 41 in width and or 14.5 in thickness, and that is partly indebted to the double domed sapphire crystal. It does uh, extend pretty far off of the dial, so that is adding to the overall girth of this watch. But it isn't problematic in daily use, and I've worn this casually, and I've worn this in dress attire. You know, it's it's never been an issue that thickness. So if you were trying to wear it as a dress piece, I don't think you'd find any issues with it but I can see where the overall proportions may be a minor bad note for some. Now, initially when I took in this watch, those hands seemed to be dwarfed in scale to the overall proportions of the watch. They seemed just a little small. And I often find myself looking at it and feeling that it was disproportional. Now, ultimately, I don't get that impression of the watch anymore. And I think it was due to the scale of the loom plots that are placed on those pencil hands. They are smaller than the pencil hands themselves. It only makes sense but they did make the handset seem small relative to the watch. And, you know, I can't shake that feeling every now and then. I still do feel like the hands are small, but as I look at it closer, they don't feel disproportional. And by the way, this has never affected the legibility. This is actually a very easy watch to read. As with most field watches, it has the hours indicated as well as the minutes. And that's actually really nice. And while I'm speaking of the loom on this watch, that is actually my next bad note. The dial itself is loomed, and I didn't know that at first because I didn't notice it from day to day. 
until later one evening, I noticed that the numerals on the dial were actually illuminated. Um, they blend in so well with the rest of the other dial elements that I, I honestly hadn't noticed that they were applied with luminance. However, the loom on the numerals, uh, the 1 through 12, aren't that bright. Uh, at least they're not as bright as the handset, and it would have been nice if they were even in overall brightness. And I'll provide you guys a loom shot of this piece so you can see what I'm talking about. But the loom on the numbers, uh, you can kind of forget that it's there because it isn't that bright, and it doesn't do a great job of helping you read the time in the middle of the night. But I don't think that's going to be a major issue for most people. Um, I think if the area is dimly lit, you should be able to read this watch, but don't rely on the loom on the numerals to help provide you the time. One other minor bad note I want to get out of the way is the fact that this watch, I actually touched on this in a Pet Peeves video recently, but the Miyota 821A caliber in here doesn't feature a hacking mechanism, so if that's something that you find absolutely essential with your timepieces, we'll note that it is lacking here. Now, aside from the overall thickness, the hands feeling disproportional, and the loom on the numerals being a little weak, this is actually a really fantastic field watch all in all. So why don't we move on to those good points and let's discuss some of the things I really liked about it. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the date window implementation. I think it was executed perfectly on this watch. The frame itself is perfect in proportion to the size of the hour numerals on the dial. I love the gold color tone of the framing of that window. It matches the solid brass case perfectly. And I also love that the date wheel itself has a matching blue background to the dial itself. It just blends in with the dial so perfectly. It's one of those things that you can forget that it's there, but when you do need the date, uh, it's very legible, it's very easy to see, and it doesn't disrupt the overall style of the dial, and I like that a whole lot. Yeah, one of the better date windows to date, I really like how it was executed here, and as we all know, it's becoming harder and harder to find watches out on the market that don't implement a date, so when you have a company that does it and blends it in well with the aesthetic of the watch, I really appreciate that, and it was done very well here. And speaking of style, this field watch has it by the boatload. Neil has achieved a really excellent field watch aesthetic with the Brooklyn Field series of watches. All of them across the board are real aesthetic charmers and one of my favorite case designs in a while. This solid brass cylindrical case reminds me a whole heck of a lot of vintage field watches, specifically trench watches, watches that were pocket watches converted to be worn as wrist watches by attaching wired lugs to the side. and. It, it, you know, you know, knowing Neil and his background with pocket watches, I can see where he might have been inspired for this overall field watch aesthetic, and it is so well executed here. I really love how the wired lugs play with the brass case. It just makes for a really fun watch to wear, a very fun field watch. Speaking of, those brass wired lugs marry so well with the solid brass case, and I just think it's one of the better designs I've seen overall paired with that dial face. It was very well conceptualized and executed. So props on the overall design here. Now, one of the last good notes I'd like to mention is the leather strap this came with. It's perfectly adequate. Is it best in class? Definitely not. I mean, for $625, by the way, this watch weighs in about 625 US. Uh, this strap is better than a lot of its competition, and I love the custom buckle on the end here. I'll show you this in the B-cam, but it is also made out of brass and will patina alongside the case extremely well, and it has up till this point. So let me show you what that looks like. And here you can see the signed leather strap, as well as that beautiful sapphire exhibition case back that gives you a glimpse of that Miyota movement I spoke of earlier. And we have the other end with the brass buckle. And I really like this buckle design. I like the length of it. I like the little carpenter signature. And again, it ties in super well with the watch. It's length and scale sort of reminiscent of those wired lugs. And you can see what I'm talking about here. Stylistically, I think it was a great choice. And I like the fact that he went with a custom buckle to match his watch. A lot of companies 
decide not to do that and they go with sort of an easy out in regards to the overall design neo really thought about everything here so that's what i mean with the overall execution you know he thought of everything now i want to touch on the case material here this is made out of solid brass so if you are allergic to that metal uh, it does have a 316l stainless steel case back so your wrist shouldn't be in contact with the brass however um I understand if you do have that allergenic problem. These Brooklyn Field Watches do come in stainless steel cases, but I don't believe any of them are available right now. And on that note, one of the last good notes I want to mention is the exclusivity of these timepieces. You really feel like you're entering an exclusive club when you wear these. And I've actually seen a bunch of these out in the wild, and it might be because I'm in New York, but um, I've seen people wear these and they're very proud of them and they're very handsome watches, but they're all limited to around about 50 to 75, I've noticed. Those seem to be the magic number. The M14 and M13 that are currently available um, are limited to 75. So when you buy one of these, you are an exclusive member of the Carpenter Club and it is a good club to be a part of. In the final good note I want to mention about this watch, and it may be a vain one, but it's something I noticed with this watch more over any other I've worn in public. I have received tons of compliments on this watch. I don't know why I don't. It's like, it, it's crazy to me because I've, I've worn other watches I'm you know particularly proud of or I spent a lot of money on or I really enjoy wearing and I never receive any compliments on those. But there was one day I went out, uh, I was on my way to my job and even on my job, I received like three compliments on this timepiece, and it is a very handsome piece. I think it's just a testament to how elegant and gorgeous this piece is in person. Um, and speaking of, I wanna provide you guys a wrist shot so you can see what this will look like for all of your admirers as well as yourself. Now here is what the Brooklyn Field Watch will look like when others are complimenting you on it, and here is what it will look like when you go to admire it. And you can tell almost immediately that the scale is sort of a null issue when this watch is on the wrist and I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist but part of the magic here is the fact that those brass wired lugs don't really add anything to the overall scale of this piece because um, you know in definition and in, in overall scale they're so skinny and small and you can still see your wrist from behind them that they don't add to the overall scale or wearability on the wrist it feels like a 40 or 41 millimeter watch on your wrist so if you have a smaller wrist, uh, I wouldn't be so fearful of this being or wearing too large. Uh, it shouldn't be an issue for you. And also you can see from the profile view here how prominently it sits atop your wrist. And this may be why it's so eye-catching because it is rather thick. But again, it never proved an issue on my day-to-day -day use. The crown never dug into my wrist. And again, that's partly due to the case back resting so high above where that crown is seated. And also you can see that, again, that really beautiful brass buckle on the back end of this leather strap. And by the way, the leather strap is a really good pairing with the gold tone of the brass. I like this combination a lot. Now, Neil has done a really good job with his Brooklyn Field Watch lineup, and the M14 marks the 14th model in the series. And every time he releases or re-releases one of these watches, it's never the same as something that came prior to it. He always changes up a minor detail or a major detail with the color options or the material choices that go into his designs. And you can see his eye for perfection with his work. And it's, it's crazy because I, I've spoken with Neil on some of his uh, future and upcoming projects in the past. And he's one of those guys who who's, he's not going to rush something out to market to make a quick buck. He, he's very adamant about creating something that he feels is of quality for consumers. And that's why it takes him so long to produce things. And I really appreciate that. I really respect that from a brand. I'd rather you have everything um, to your liking and, and of exceptional quality before you push it out to market. Um, you see that flaw with a lot of other brands when you have quality control issues or just choices with materials and or scaling and proportion that are just awful or wrong, uh, you can tell Neil takes a lot of time to perfect those things. And again, I really appreciate that. And I know Neil has a whole host of new watches coming out and I'm very excited to see them. He wears this uh, bronze prototype watch 
that I would really love to see come to the market. It's smaller in scale than this and, and it's patinaed so beautifully. And that's one of those things about these brass cases too. If your wrist can take it, uh, they patina very well as well and they have their own unique patina at that. So it's a very cool uh, material option that you can pick up on the market. And I don't think that many companies make brass watches. So that's also something cool about the brand. Overall, I think this is one of the better field watch options on the market. If you wanted something that was unique in its styling, it has great material options, a really decent movement, and some of the best packaging I've seen from any brand in this price range. Really, he's, he's gone over the top with presentation. I am really looking forward to feature more of Neil's watches on the channel. I really love what he does, so keep them coming, Neil. Thank you for letting me experience this watch for as long as I have. It's been a pure joy, and I hope you guys get to experience it too. Again, the quantities on these are really limited. I, I Most of his stuff is sold out at the moment, but uh, here's to hoping he puts out more uh, and soon. Now gang, if you found this video informative or in the least entertaining, feel free to hit that like button. It looks a little something like this. If you have friends, forums, or groups that are interested in watch content, specifically unique field watches, maybe share this video with them. If they've been on the fence about the Carpenter watch and have been waiting for another consumer's opinion of this piece, maybe share this with them to help them better assess whether it's the right choice. Lastly, if you're new to the channel and this is your first video, feel free to hit that subscribe button. I do these videos twice a week Right next to the subscribe button is a bell icon. If you want to be notified when these come out, you can hit that and you'll know as soon as they arrive. Again, my name is Patrick Marlatt and thank you for the time.